to a brand new video. So normally you can find me doing studio vlogs, um, but I thought I would do a, something a little bit different and design stickers with you and show you how I design my stickers, the process and how I use Procreate. So if you're new here, my name is Meg and I run the illustration business Fizz and Flourish. So let's get designing stickers. So I'm currently working through all my old sticker sheets and redrawing them to look a bit more like this. So let's open a new canvas. So I always do my sticker sheets at 4,200 pixels by 3,200 pixels. So I'm gonna take you through every step, all the brushes I'm using. I don't use that many, but um, at the moment for sketching, I'm using the Procreate 6B pencil. It is a standard Procreate pencil, and I just use this for rough sketching. Then for my line art, I've been really into the Gritty Pencil by Magdalena Dianova. So I will leave her link in the description below. You can buy the, the brush pack on Gumroad, I think it is. And I love this brush. It's my favorite at the moment. I really love the texture and everything. For coloring in, I use the Syrup, Syrup? Syrup brush. By the way, if you can hear any like baby squeaks in the background, uh, it's my son Freddy. He is eight months old. He's downstairs with his dad, but yeah, sound travels in this house. So you might hear some squeaks from him or some cries, who knows? So I love this brush for coloring in because it's pressure sensitive. You can get it to a really fine point at the end, or you know, if you want to fill bigger spaces, you can uh, press harder. Um, so I really like that for coloring. Now, the first thing I do is kind of, when I'm coming up with a sticker sheet, is think of a theme. So I ended up going for one of my favorite themes, which I guess is a coffee shop. So I was trying to think of all the things that you might find in a coffee shop and I went on Pinterest and as you can see I spent a long time looking on Pinterest. I sped it up because otherwise we'd be here all day. So to bring up a reference on Procreate I go to actions, click reference, import the image and then that brings me to my camera roll and it means that it's not on my actual canvas. I can move it across the screen and stuff. Let's face it, referencing makes life so much easier. You can also like zoom in on the photos and I'm just gonna start sketching away. So I've added some cozy music to this video, so fingers crossed it's just nice to have one in the background or you can sit and watch me sketch. I have definitely cut this down. So this video was about five hours worth of footage into now about 30 minutes. So fingers crossed I've kept in like the most interesting parts, the most important parts, and it can be really, really scary to share your initial sketches because it's like you just want to say to people, oh, but it doesn't, it doesn't end up looking like this, I promise. This is just a really, 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 really rough sketch. It's really scary to show your kind of blank canvas, I guess, and yeah, the really messy sketches. And I, I just wanted to show you my complete process from start to finish with this sticker sheet. So I tend to draw each individual sticker quite big and I don't know about you guys but I tend to draw on a bit of a slant and I'm not focusing on being neat here it's just to get the shapes down and the position so the sketching stage is really when I figure out what it is that I definitely want to include on my sticker sheet I move things around quite a lot because on Procreate it's not great at keeping the high resolution so when I come to doing my liner or the coloring stage I don't like to move anything because although it's just like maybe a teeny tiny bit pixelated I'd rather not have that as an issue if you you know find later on that you have to move something you can go into Photoshop and move it that way because you don't lose resolution when you move stuff in Photoshop but on Procreate it's not perfect once it's moved so I just like to make sure everything is in the correct position by the end of the sketch stage at the end of my sketching you'll see me move a lot of things around and that is why I need to get it perfect before getting to the line art stage. So you'll see me use the warp tool a lot. That just allows me to manipulate the shape a little bit and play around with that. So I really love this tool. There's also the liquify tool which you can find in the adjustment section of Procreate. I don't use that as much but I definitely use warp a lot. So when I'm using reference photos uh, sometimes I copy them quite 
exactly and then other times I move things around a bit so for this for example on this one I thought if the spoon was on the front it might look a bit strange in the drawing I thought maybe people won't be able to tell what it is so I ended up moving the spoon to the side and then just adding a different sort of pattern so I think now I'll just let you watch me sketch for a couple more minutes and I'll just play some cozy music so you can have me on in the background. If you want to skip ahead to different stages, I've left timestamps below so you can skip ahead to the line art stage, the colouring stage, stuff like that. But for now I'm just going to sketch away and I'll speak to you in a little bit. Okay, so I'm back. So I wanted to add the banners to the top and the bottom just so that when I'm positioning it, it was in the right place. So I ended up going to one of my revamped sticker sheets and I'm just gonna copy and paste the banner because I want all my sticker sheets to be the exact same layout. So to do that, I just hold down the layer that I want. I make sure the background is empty so it's just a PNG. Copy canvas go back to my original drawing and paste it. And then basically it's just pasted the top and bottom banner. So this way, now when I'm rearranging all of my sketches and working out the layout and everything, I know where, to, you know, I'm not gonna have them too high up to the edge. And um, it's also good to bear in mind, you need to leave enough room around each sticker that you can have like a white border. Now. I ended up making this sticker sheet absolutely chock-a-block, so something to bear in mind, uh, I did struggle a little bit with spacing because I ended up putting loads of stickers on this sheet, so anyway, I'll let the music play and talk to you in a little bit. I absolutely love adding these little faces. I think it just brings the stickers to life. And yeah, I just think they're so cute. And I can hear my son getting carried up the stairs. Sorry, but I've always asked to see mama. Milky time. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I'm back from feeding my son. Next is the line art stage, and it's my favorite stage. I absolutely love it. I'm using the Gritty Brush from Magdalena Dianova. Again, I'll leave the link in the description below. So I've just lowered the opacity of the sketch stage, and now I'm drawing the line art on a layer above. I just love line art. I think it's my favorite stage because the sketch is really messy and you can't quite see what it's going to look like but with the line art you can refine it and make it neat and I just love it. I would love to know what your favourite stage is, I wonder if I'm alone in the line art. A lot of people like colouring but that is actually my least favourite stage. So yeah, let me know in the comments below. I always try to reply to my comments, so it'd be really great to meet new artists there. And yeah, I'd like to see what um, what your favorite stage is. So with this style that I've been doing, I create a layer above the line art and I go in with more detail and some texture. The reason I've done it on a separate layer is just to see if I like it. So you can see I'm like turning it on and off and it's just to kind of work out whether I want to keep it or not and I end up keeping it so I, I just end up doing it all on one layer just for to make it easier. I should mention I do all of my line art on one layer, I do all of my sketches on one layer and it's just like so much easier. If I was to do a new layer for every sticker I just would get so confused. These little extra details that I'm doing with the line art, I tend to use it as a way of adding shadow and it's something that I, I've i recently just started doing and I really love the effect. I think it adds some texture and with this gritty brush you can either press hard and get like quite a strong black or you can press super super light and it's really subtle but adding these little like lines just gives the object some texture and so it's not just about shadow it's also about adding that texture 
So quite a few people ask me how I decide where to make the line art thicker and thinner because I think it's really important to add a bit of depth to the illustration and I like adding thick lines in places and thinner lines in places. Now for me it's just quite instinctive, I don't really have um, a method. I guess the, the closest thing I can explain it to is I tend to do a thicker line maybe where there's more shadow and a thinner line where the light kind of hits it if that makes sense. So if you look at the top of this kind of cafetiere, like on the lid part at the top it's a lot thinner and that's because if the light was to hit it you would, you know, that bit was, would be more in the distance and you wouldn't see it as strongly as you would see the, the line closer to you. I go into loads of detail about how I draw my line art over on my Patreon, so you can find the link in the description below if you like this sort of video. I've done other videos on Patreon. I do live streams every month where I do art tutorials, business tutorials, explain my process and I did a live stream a couple of months back about my line art. It was really heavily requested over on my Patreon and I shared my screen and did my line art with one of my characters and I explained why I choose to draw certain parts of the lines thicker and other parts thinner and I go into real detail about my process there. So all my live streams are available to watch back. I've saved them all, they're all recorded so you can go back and watch them at any time if you join my Patreon. The plan is also to be doing some live streams over on YouTube. I've never done it before, but that is the plan. Although those live streams are just gonna be some cozy draw with me videos. I'm not gonna be super chatty. I'm not gonna use that as a way of explaining my process. That's more just to have some company as I draw. But like I said, my live streams over on Patreon are where I explain my process and share my hints and tips um, about using Procreate and how I draw and stuff. Anyway, I am going to let the cozy music play and let you watch my process of drawing line art. And again, if you want to skip ahead to the colouring stage, just have a look at the timestamps below.
Okay, so now we are moving on to colour. I am not great at this, but yeah, let's just go with it. I changed the banner so that it wasn't the same as the other colour sheet, and I'm just going with a palette that I already had on my Procreate. I must have created this um, colour palette a while ago. Right now, I'm just doing some really, really rough colour ideas. This isn't my actual colouring, don't worry, I am not worrying about colouring inside the lines and it's just to play around with at the moment. I go into more detail about how I use gradient maps and adjustments and things like that. So right now I'm just testing and plotting out which colours I want on the actual sticker sheet. What I like to do is repeat some colours so you've got some pinks dotted around the page and I try and have it so that they are spaced out on the page rather than maybe the bottom four all being the same colour if that makes sense. One thing I've also started doing is adding a colour background so I go into more detail later about how I draw my cut lines so that you can add an extra bleed so that when you're cutting your stickers on your Cricut or your silhouette or wherever you don't like go into the background colour. So I'm liking this colour palette, but I want to tweak it. So I get rid of the background layer and I copy just the stickers. Then I paste it onto its own layer at the top. I then duplicate this layer, head over to adjustments and click gradient map. I tend to use the neon and then I go through and I change to luminosity usually. I also like to go through and look at all the other sections, but the reason I've copied and pasted the stickers alone is because I don't actually want to change the background colour, I just wanted to change the actual sticker colour. And you can change this layer to multiply, pin light, luminosity, there's so many options, it depends kind of what your initial colour palette is, but usually I go for luminosity and then I lower the opacity slightly. It just adds a, a brightness to the colours, and the one thing I've noticed though is is luminosity tends to make the darker colors bright and the light colors really dark. So what I'm doing here on the luminosity layer is rubbing out those lighter areas. So this um, gradient map is almost like a filter on top of your normal colors. And what I'm doing is rubbing out that filter on the lighter colors. I'm also going into adjustments and changing the saturation, the hue, the brightness, and until I've got it how I want it. I then copy and paste the whole canvas again, I make it smaller and then I move it to the corner of the canvas. This way I can start my colours from scratch and colour drop this little kind of template. So you can see here I'm choosing the colour and now I'm colouring the real thing. I'm using the syrup or syrup brush here and I'm just gonna colour away. I think it's quite therapeutic watching someone colour. I really enjoy these kind of videos. There are plenty more hints and tips about shadows and how I add my cut lines and an extra bleed. So stick around for that or skip ahead to the timestamp. And yeah, I'll speak to you in a little bit.
So I thought I would just pop on and say hello, check in with you all. I hope you're liking this cozy video. If you do like it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like this video. I also absolutely love hearing from you guys in the comments, so let me know what you're working on, whether this video has been helpful, and let me know if you want me to make more of these. I think when you work from home on your creative business, it's really easy to get lonely and just having videos like this is great company i absolutely love watching them so let me know what you think and i'll be sure to make more okay so i accidentally deleted some footage at showing you how i'm adding this shadow layer but basically i have created a new layer above the coloring and I've set it to multiply. Um, I tend to, if you look in the top right hand corner, you can see I've chosen like a pink blush color. If you think of multiply like a filter on top of your color stage, you can use the same shadow color across all of your color layers and it will enhance the color below. I don't know if that makes sense. I did have footage explaining it really well, but it's gone. So if you're confused, just send me a message or comment below and I'll try and explain it a bit better. But I think adding these little shadows really makes the illustrations pop. Okay, so it's now time for the cut lines. I'm not gonna show you all of this because we'll be here forever but I'm using the monoline brush. It's a really great brush for the cut line because it doesn't taper off, it stays the same size. Now, the thing I'm gonna do a little bit differently is create a bleed for my cut line. So I fill in the shape and then I change it to black. I then go on a layer below it and then I draw the cut line again around the black. And the reason I change the initial cut line to black is so that I can see the contrast between the two. If I'd left it white and then drew white on top, I wouldn't uh, get a true idea of how thick the bleed line was gonna be. So if you think of the black line as being where the Cricut will cut, and then the white around that black is a bit of a buffer for your Cricut if it doesn't cut exactly to plan. So I then just fill in the black to white, and that's my cut line with the bleed on a layer below it. So when I import the sticker into Cricut, what I'm doing is saving the background and the bleed line as one layer, and then saving the illustrations and the cut line as one layer. That way the Cricut doesn't cut out the, the bleed line. I hope that makes sense. I think at some point I want to do a tutorial on how I make stickers and sticker sheets and show you my method for doing that. Now, the reason I draw in white and then change it to black like I'm doing here is because I find it, I don't know why, I find it quite difficult to do the line in black. I like to do it in white. Anyway, I'm now just finishing off my sticker sheet with some text. So I keep the same font for my business so that I'm keeping on brand. I then go to my older sticker sheet and I select those layers for the font at the bottom and a little bit at the top because I'm keeping that exactly the same. I make it a PNG, copy the canvas, and then I go back to my sheet and paste. That way, all of my sticker sheets are the same. The font at the bottom hasn't changed. The sizing is exactly the same as my other sticker sheets. The only thing I'm changing is the title of the actual, actual sticker sheet and my inventory number, which is how I keep a track of my stickers and keep them organized. So I hope you've loved this video. If you have, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I've got plenty of studio vlogs that you can binge watch. I've got other draw with me's. So yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed it. And I'm going to finish editing and hopefully get this out to you ASAP. Okay, that's it from me. I shall see you next week, probably for a studio vlog. Okay, bye guys.